Through studying our water samples from citizen scientists, we're able to see that there's a relationship between land use and water quality. In more densely populated areas, we're seeing a decline in water quality. So we've been mapping out the watershed in the lab, and we see changes in two main areas, agricultural and developed lands. In agricultural areas, we're seeing an increase in phosphorus running off the landscape, and that would be coming from things like fertilizer and manure. And on the west side of the lake, where we have more developed areas, we see an increase in phosphorus, and that's coming from these hard surfaces in urban areas. So phosphorus can help the growth of blue-green algae blooms, and this can be a major deterrent for people that want to use the water. So the other thing we look at as an indicator for urban development is chloride. And an increase in chloride can also affect the water chemistry and what can grow there. So according to the 2010 Lake Scugog Environmental Management Plan, 18% of the phosphorus is coming from these urban areas. Yet the urban areas around Lake Scugog only make up 3.56% of land use. So when we see high levels of chloride in the water, this tends to indicate that it's coming from road salts and being washed off right into the lake. On Lake Scugog, we definitely see an increase on the west side around Port Perry. Port Perry is actively growing, so we need to look at measures to slow down the increase of phosphorus and chloride entering the lake. We need to keep this lake as healthy as possible for the years to come.